Our prophet Noble Girali teaches us that man is not the body or the soul. Man is a spirit and a part of Allah. He continues to teach us uh, that man is from the everlasting past to the never ending days to come. Man has to realize that we are spiritual beings and in the spiritual realm. There's no gender. It's just spirit. Man, according to our prophet, Noble Juali, is here to function on the plane of soul and on the plane of things made manifest. So we were giving certain uh, instruments to do that with. We were given a body of soul to function, to move around on the plane of soul. We were given a body of flesh to move around and function on the plane of things that are made manifest. It's interesting to know that we are in the rate of atmosphere uh, when these physical bodies that atmosphere is not the only sphere that exists. Above atmosphere, you have troposphere, stratosphere, ionosphere, exosphere, endosphere. But we have reached the rate of atmosphere on the plane of things made manifest. And therefore, we needed a body to move around in. And Allah, who is infinite mercy, gave us that body to move around in flesh. Man is also, according to our prophet, no majority, truth and falsehood, strangely mixed. He has to know who he is and what his purpose is on this round of life. Dedication to our Lord Almighty ensures us a place in his paradise. And that is what we are attempting to do, demonstrating one hand and one heart. So. Man's quest for his spirituality and knowledge of his spirituality uh, has to be reminded of his place, and his position in these things here by a divine prophet every so often. And man has to have enough um, heart, courage, bravery to go after that information and become all that he could be, a spirit man. We know the spirit man, according to the prophet Noble Juali, cannot die. Why? Because he's a part of Allah. And if Allah can't die, then man, spirit man, cannot die. So what we see that is demise or death is a changing of the form, a changing from this physical form to our real form, which human eyes cannot behold. And this is a form of spirit. These are, this is high information, high science that you can only get through more science. And more science is presented to us by none other than the great prophet, the founder of the more science temple of America, the prophet Noble Juali. And there are no innuendos and insinuations or uh, spookisms that are taught in the more science temple of America. It's cut and dry. Everyone can enter and learn as they like and work out their own potential again to be the best they can be in this kind of information. This information about man hmm, was once a secret. The Muslims of India, Egypt, and Palestine had these secrets about man, but now they've been revealed, and we have it now. So we can grow and unfold constantly like a bud unfolds to show the flower. Man must be more active than passive in terms of elevating himself near the pinnacle of wisdom. Signs and symbols are for the conscious mind. We know that. In the circle, the, the seven with the, un, with the broken circle around it has many meanings, there's symbolic meanings to it. It's not the name of Holy Quran or the Morris Science Temple of America. So let's get that straight. It's not, give me the circle seven. That's not what it is. It's a symbol. We also know that that symbolic symbol is one of the symbols on the 10 houses of the charter that we have, you know. Man uh, going to four different directions in the universe, north, south, east, and west, or Allah demonstrating the four uh, uh, directions 
in the universe, north, south, east, and west. We're everywhere. Allah is everywhere. Seven is the number of perfected, so we are perfected and we're everywhere, north, south, east, and west. Our prophet Nobu Jirali teaches us that this is one of the greatest creation in all creation. But what it is used for is we can't extend it to each other. Moreover, we can't score off to ourselves. To me, the symbolism means that your hand is over your heart, you're squaring off to Allah, and you mean what you say, you're pledging to the one who needs the pledge, which is your creator, Allah Almighty. He deserves to hear your pledge to him. He made you and he made I. He made me, he made you. So that's as much as I get out of the prophet's hand over his heart. And what's wrong with it? Nothing wrong with it. Man must remember too that while he's on this round and his whole position or a large percent of his position is to build his character, really. You know, character makes you a man, an outstanding man that other men can rely upon. And in building that character, we use those tools used in the workshop of the mind where things are made of thought. Mm -hmm. Symbolically. We were talking about the hammer earlier for man. Man needs to take hold of that hammer and pound it in until it's a part of every part, meaning truth. Oh, yeah. And when he's out of the bounds of moderation, he needs to pull off his compass and draw a circle around his passions and his desires and keep them in some kind of confines of righteousness. So man has a lot of work to do. Asiatic, Asiatic is coming from the word Asia, which means the world. So, I mean, um, it's, it's ludicrous to think that there's an East Asia, not a West Asia. If you're into geographical science, if you got an East, you got a West. And many of our people, unfortunately, cut themselves off of being Asiatics because when they say, oh, these are from East Asia, well, if there's East Asia, there's a West Asia. And, and truly, that's true. So West Asia to us would be what is now known as Africa, which original name is a Maxim, according to our prophet, Noble Jirali, the first true and divine name of Africa. So we are Asiatics and our, our brothers and sisters are Asiatics, and this connects us with all of our divine origin as Asiatics, you know, such as the Mexicans, the uh, Nicaraguans, the Chinese, the Egyptians, the Japanese, the natives of San Salvador. All of these are Asiatics slash Muslims. So this is our family as we are their family as well. And we need to treat each other that way. And we need to remind each other that we're bound by the Asiatic Holy Covenant. And so and we need to look at each other that way. There's nothing different about us as Asiatics. Our prophet Noble Drali gives us a whole entire chapter on the divine origin of the Asiatic nations, in case you didn't know who your family was and is right now, you will know. And some of them is what I mentioned earlier, some of those Asiatics, and they know it. We know it now. At one time when we were calling ourselves the marks of Negro, black, and color, we thought that we had no connection. We looked at our own brother, Mexican Americans and Mexicans and Nicaraguans as somebody different because they were light olive than us. Now we know they are Asiatics and they are our brothers and our sisters as we are theirs as well. And we got to treat each other right. We have to know that. We do know um, that um, a Maxim is the first true and divine name of Africa. And that uh, the first three letters of a Maxim, A-M-E, are also the first three letters of America. We also know that R-I-C-A are the last four letters of America, and R-I-C-A are the last four letters of Africa. So possibly could that mean that uh, America would mean the old and the new? Uh, America is still part of the present Moroccan Empire. It is what we consider, geographically speaking, Upper Egypt. We consider, uh, according to the science of geography, uh, 
the same land uh, according to the Teutonic plates on the coastland of New Jersey and uh, West Africa are identical according to the science of geology, not geography, but geology, and that this is the same land. Furthermore, according to geology, when we talked about the Teutonic plates and the difference in them, uh, it's noted by a, a, a professional geologist that there was the continent of Atlantis. And the prophet Nova Girali teaches us this information, that when Atlantis sank, then came the Atlantic Ocean. But the continent of Atlantis brought what is now called America, North America, to what is now called the West Coast of Africa. It was Atlantis that hooked both continents together. So we, we're the same people on different sides of the ocean. The only thing that's separating us is water. It's the only thing. So, and, and we have more um, reference to that uh, with the, uh, the Native American uh, group called the Nanticoke the Nanticoke uh, Native American group whose name is synonymous with more in the International Dictionary. Uh, so we know that um, they are, um, their features are African. They do everything that we do in, in West Africa in terms of milling their corn and farming the land and they have nappy hair, big lips during the time of so-called slavery, they had to have special papers not to be engulfed in this ugly system of uh, holding the man captive and against his will. But there are so many different other, uh, many inf terms of information that shows that this was one land, according to the prophet Noble Jerome.